Hi, my name is Devin Griffiths, and I'm very excited to be with you here today as we begin reading Little Dora together. Um, this is an amazing novel, and it's so exciting to be able to tell you a little bit about why I love it so much. So, the first thing to know about reading Little Dora is, when Dickens first published it, it didn't come out as a big novel like this. As a matter of fact, it appeared initially in little parts, groups of little chapters at a time bound together as something that looked like a magazine or maybe a comic book which meant that Dickens was under enormous pressure every time he began a novel like this to tell us what is this world, how does it work, and why should we care. And therefore, right from the beginning, he works hard to establish what are the basic concerns, what really matters here. And the title of that first chapter, Sun and Shadow, tells us that this is a novel that's going to be about sun and shadow, about light and darkness, about good and evil, about right and wrong. And even in this prison cell that we begin in, in Marseille, we recognize that there's a strong distinction between Jean-Baptiste Cavalletto and Monsieur Rignot in terms of whether or not these are basically good people. Jean-Baptiste has basically grown up in a poor background. He doesn't seem to have a lot to his name, and yet he lives life with a kind of passion, satisfaction, and happiness, right? He doesn't allow this prison to determine who he is. On the other hand, we have Monsieur Rignot, who seems deeply fearful, crafty, and he seems like somebody who would do anything to get ahead. Um, and this idea of a strong contrast between good and bad is carried through these first four chapters. We also have a sense of these different ills in society that Dickens insists that we take a look at. We've already seen the problem of crime and punishment. But in the second chapter, we move in a quarantine zone that reminds us that these big urban populations and these circulations of people are causing these mass epidemics of disease. And we also have a sense that there are social diseases, psychological diseases, the sense that Taddy Coram might be a little bit mad. These are massive problems for Dickens to be raising at the beginning, but it seems clear that he's going to try in this novel to diagnose what it is that makes us unhappy and hopefully what we can do to try to be better people to live happier lives. Um, finally, you can see right from the beginning that one of the things Dickens wants to do is establish a sense of mystery, a reason to keep us reading from part to part, from chapter to chapter. We get these questions raised right away. Who is this Monsieur Rignot? When he marches off to get sentenced, what happens to him? Does he die? Does he live? Why is it that when Arthur Clennam meets this woman, this girl named Pet, he's reminded of some woman from his past, this love that he once left back in London, right? Who is Little Dorrit? Why does Clennam not notice her initially when he initially enters the room? We're not, why does the narrator not tell us that she's in there? It's only after Cl he, Arthur leaves and is talking to someone else that he remembers, oh, who is that girl who's sitting in the room? Why is she introduced in this way when it's a novel named after her? And above all, who are these doubles that are circulating in this novel? On the one hand, we have Pet's lost dead twin, who in this weird way is supposed to be living some sort of parallel life in their family together as they imagine her living on. On the other hand, you have the Flintwitch and then this double that shows up in the middle of the night and scares Mrs. Flintwitch half out of her wits. Who are these people? Why are there twins circulating on the edges of this novel? And what do they mean for these characters? And good luck. Bye.